Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and in today's video, we're gonna create this image hotspot element using only CSS. Now this image can be an image of a map or an image of a product, anything where you want to have clickable markers within an image placed in specific locations. Today we're gonna to do this using a map. But the key thing is we're not gonna use any JavaScript and we're also gonna make sure that this thing is somewhat accessible. Now, disclaimer, I am not an accessibility expert or a lawyer, but we're gonna take extra steps here to make sure that these markers on this image map are both keyboard accessible and that they make sense when using a screen reader. The one I'll be testing with is the built-in screen reader on my MacBook. So with that in mind, let's jump into Oxygen and get started. Now the first thing I like to do with any of these builds is I'm gonna start with my basic structure. Now this isn't gonna be a full page, we're just focusing on this one element, but we are gonna put it all inside of a section. So we click add and go to section, and I want to set this to main on the tag dropdown here. And next I wanna add a heading here. So if this was on a page, you might make this an H2, but I'm gonna make it an H1 since there won't be any other headings here, and we'll say, map of our locations. And let's go ahead and center all of this. Now what we're gonna need is a div to put our image and all of our markers inside of. So we'll give this div a class, we'll call it hotspots. And the most important thing we need here is under advanced layout, we need position relative because you guessed it, we're gonna absolutely position our image and our markers within this div. Now let's go ahead in and drop in an image. So we'll drop in our image here and let's browse. And I have an image of a map that I downloaded here from Pexels. So we're gonna drop this in, let it upload and then select the image. That gives us a nice little map image. Now again, this is a really useful technique for something like an image of your product that you're selling where you wanna highlight specific physical features throughout the image of the product. So definitely keep that in mind as we work through this that a map of locations or whatever is not the only application of this. So because we're going to keep in mind some accessibility concerns here and usability concerns, we wanna give this image an alt text and we'll call it map, map of our locations throughout the world. And that'll just make sure that folks using a screen reader will understand what the image is when they give it focus. Now we're gonna drop in our first marker. Now this is going to be a link wrapper. Normally we would just use a div, but because we need this to be keyboard focusable, we're gonna use a link wrapper and because we want it to be clickable. So ideally, if this was a map of our locations, each of these link wrappers would have a link pointing to the page for that specific location. And we're not using a text link because we don't want any text actually within the link. So let's drop in a link wrapper here and let's give it a class of hotspots underscore underscore marker. Now there's a couple of design things we wanna do here. Let's go to advanced size and spacing and let's just set this to like 16 by 16. We don't want it too big. Now, one thing you'll note here is that my size of my link wrapper didn't actually change. That's because Oxygen imposes an 80 by 80 pixel minimum width to any container element in the builder. It doesn't do it on the front end, but in the builder, it makes sure you have at least 80 pixels by 80 pixels to drop stuff into. That's because you can drag and drop within the canvas, and if it was too small, you wouldn't be able to do that. So to override that, we can go to advanced custom CSS and just set min width to zero pixels with an important tag, and then min height zero pixels important. Now we can go back and make those adjustments and we should see our changes. So we have width, 16 pixels, height, 16 pixels. And I suspect that I probably typoed that custom CSS. And I did, we do not need the <laughs> exclamation point at the end there. Okay, fixed. All right, it wouldn't be one of my videos without at least one typo, right? So let's move on from that. We've got our small size marker. Now let's go ahead and give it a background color of maybe just white for now. We might adjust this a little bit to match the vibe of our image later, but maybe not. We'll go with white for now. And then I do wanna give it some border treatment here. So we're gonna give it a border color of maybe like an orangish 
something that goes along with our map. Uh, we'll do solid and we'll do two pixels. Now you can see it down there, but it's not super visible. We're also gonna give it 100% border radius to make it circular. Now we need to go to advanced layout. Now we're gonna do something here. We're gonna set this to absolute, but we're not gonna position it with the class. That's because all of our markers are gonna have the same class, but they're all gonna have different positions on the map. So let's go up to our selector dropdown and let's jump back to the link wrappers ID. Now under advanced layout, we're gonna to want to choose position absolute again, and then we're gonna to wanna to set our top and left position values. And we're gonna use percentages so that this image or this marker stays positioned relative to the image as things scale down. So let's set the top to something like 31 maybe. We're gonna put this on kind of a random place in the map. Let's put it uh, uh, 70%, so that puts it all the way over there on the right side. So that'll be our first marker. Now we can actually duplicate this and start building out our markers. But first we want to deal with a couple of attributes on this marker because the way we're getting our CSS tooltips is by storing the tooltip text within an attribute. Okay, so we're going to go to advanced attributes and we actually need two attributes here. The first one is going to be an attribute we're making up. So this is just going to be called tooltip. Okay, and then the value of the tooltip attribute is gonna be whatever we want our tooltip to say. Now, a couple of restrictions, you can't really use apostrophes or single quotes in here. I'm not sure if you can use uh, double quotes. I mean, it's gonna yell at you. It might encode it and be fine, but we're gonna avoid those entirely. We're gonna say location number one here in our tooltip. Now, another thing we're gonna end up needing is a title attribute, and this is gonna help with accessibility. So we're gonna give it a title attribute, and then the value is gonna be some explanation of this link. So we could do something as simple as location number one link. You can also do something more descriptive. Again, I'm not an accessibility expert. There are probably best practices for how to form the titles of your links, so defer to those, of course. But for now, we're gonna keep this simple. So that takes care of our attributes. Now we can go ahead and duplicate this marker and then update our attributes on each marker we create. So let's duplicate this one, go to advanced layout, and we're gonna reposition it on our map. So let's move it down to somewhere down lower. Let's go down here. And we don't wanna be in the middle of the ocean. So let's go to a landmass here. Perfect, and then let's go to our attributes section and we'll say location number two and location number two link. And then let's do two more of these. Let's position this one under advanced layout. Let's move left quite a bit and go up a little bit. And that looks good. And then we'll go to advanced attributes and do location number three and location number three link. There we go. And let's duplicate that one more time and put one over here in the west somewhere. So we'll go again to advanced layout and go down to position and just adjust that. So what I'm doing here is I'm selecting the left value and I'm using my up and down arrows to position it on the map. That's the nice thing about being able to kind of just see what you're doing here in Oxygen is when you're absolutely positioning something, you can just nudge it until it's exactly where you want it. Now let's go over and adjust the attributes on this one, location number four and location number for link. So let's save because we have all the groundwork laid. Everything is in its proper position. The image has an alt tag. The links have titles. That all looks good. Now we need to do some custom CSS. So we're gonna jump into a style sheet under manage style sheets. And we'll add a style sheet called hotspots. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump straight into fairly advanced CSS and we're gonna use an attribute selector. So using square brackets and typing an attribute name, 
allows us to select all elements with that attribute. This is a super handy technique that you should definitely keep in your back pocket if you design websites because it does become quite useful in certain situations. And then we're gonna go ahead and create slash style a pseudo element on elements that have the tooltip attribute. So let's do colon colon before. This is gonna actually end up being our tooltip. So what we need to do, and this is the big kind of tricky part of this CSS, is we need the content of this pseudo element to be the same as the tooltip attributes value. Now, normally you would need JavaScript or something to do that, but CSS has an attribute function that lets you extract values from attributes on the element you're styling and use it in the content property. Technically, this should also be possible for other properties like background color and things like that, but it doesn't really work yet. Hopefully someday, for now, it works really reliably on the content property. So here's how we do it. We do A-T-T-R, and if you've used Clamp or Calc, then you'll be familiar with how this works. So A-T-T-R, and then we're gonna pass in the name of the attribute, which is easy, it's just tooltip. So you can see over here that now we have these uh, tooltips displayed as text within our links. So that's perfect. Now we can do some styling. So one thing we wanna do is make sure that these aren't clickable. So if they're invisible, we don't want people to accidentally click them. So we're gonna do pointer events none. And then we're gonna do position absolute. I think I might have forgotten to set position relative on the parent. So I might have to go back and do that, but let's see how far we can get here. Let's set the width to 200 pixels, and then we could set the top value to 100%, but we want a little bit of a gap there. So let's do calc 100% plus eight pixels. And then left, we're gonna do half of the width. So we'll do left 100 pixels. And actually I think that needs to be negative 100 pixels, and that'll center it on the parent. So let's go over here and make sure all of these are showing up how they should. Now it looks like we're missing one on location number one. So let's jump up to the front end and see if that is the case. Nope, they all show up here. Okay, perfect. Now let's go back here and we'll continue styling this tooltip until we get it looking exactly how we want. Now one thing we do definitely want is a background color. We're gonna do black for now. And then let's do some padding of maybe eight pixels. Let's do a border radius of two pixels and let's set the color to white. That should give us our white text. So now that looks pretty good. If we look over here in the preview, we have our little tool tips that appear below our markers. Now let's give it a Z index of 10. And then let's decide kind of how we want this thing to appear. We could do kind of a flip or opacity change. I think let's start with opacity zero. So they're gonna be invisible at first until the markers hovered. And then let's go with a bit of a flip action. So let's do transform scale Y zero, okay? So it's gonna have no height at all and no opacity. Now what we wanna do is when our tooltip element is hovered, we wanna change that. So here's how we can do that. First, we need to set up a CSS animation. So we'll do keyframes, flip, we're gonna name it flip, and we're gonna do from transform scale Y zero, which is our starting point and opacity zero, to transform scale Y one and opacity one. So we'll flip, kind of do a flip slash expansion situation and it will become more visible from uh, opacity of zero. So now we need to apply this animation when our marker is hovered. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do tooltip. This is our attribute selector again. And then on hover, we're gonna affect the before element. And we're gonna set the animation name to flip animation duration to 0.5 seconds, and animation iteration count to one, because we only want it to run once. Now let's go ahead and save and test on the front end to make sure that this does what we want. And you can see that as we hover over that, it does go ahead and flip up, but we do have a slight problem here. Because we started at zero opacity, I believe it's reaching the end of the animation and then reverting back to that. So let's go back here and let's remove, let's remove our 
transform scale Y first because I think that might actually be the problem. So let's set that there and then hover and you can see that it comes out and it still disappears. So we still got a little bit of a problem with our animation here. Let's try setting our opacity to one here when the element is hovered because maybe it's reverting back to no opacity. So hover there and now we can see we have the desired effect. So when we hover any of these, we're gonna see the tooltip value that's set on the tooltip attribute. So that's a pretty cool way to get kind of a reusable element where all you have to do is just change the attribute value and the displayed tooltip is uh, changed to whatever value you've set. Now, because we want these tooltips to be visible to folks using keyboard navigation, we're gonna add an additional selector here. So tooltip focus, before. So now if the link is focused also will show the tooltip. So let's refresh. So if we hover it and actually it looks like we have a typo here. So let's go back. That should fix it. And let's jump up here. And if we hover, we get our tooltip. But also if we use tab to move into our element here and tab through, you can see that our tooltips are displayed, which is absolutely fantastic. And then another thing we definitely want to test is that this scales well. We want these tooltip markers to stay in the same location as the image gets resized. So as you can see, they are remaining in the right location. Now you might want to potentially resize them as it gets smaller, but you don't want to make them too small because on mobile, they won't be easy to tap with a finger if they're too tiny. And in fact, right now they're only 16 by 16 pixels. That's actually a little small based on some of the standards I've read. Uh, so that's something you definitely want to consider if a lot of your website visitors are on mobile, which is usually the case. Let's jump back over here and let's start wrapping up our custom CSS. There's one more little touch I want to do here, and that's like a pulsing ring around the tooltip. Um, I know that's not 100% necessary, but sometimes it can help draw attention to an element that's focusable slash clickable. So we can go in here and do tooltip, and we'll use another pseudo element after, and this will be our little pulsing ring. Now we don't want any content for this, so we're gonna set the content to nothing, but we do have to have the content property. Now we're gonna set the background color to transparent. And again, let's catch that typo before we test on the front end. <laughs> and position absolute. And let's set it to 64 pixels wide and 64 pixels high. And let's give it a border radius of 50% and a border of two pixels solid white. So now you can see we've got our little ring. Now we need to position these kind of centered on the parent. Now, one way that can sometimes work with these, I'm not positive if it will work here, but sometimes with absolutely positioned elements, you can just use Flexbox positioning to center them, which is way easier than like trying to calculate exactly where you want them to be. So if this works, it'll be great. We'll set this to lay out vertically and like that, everything's centered. So that was a much easier shortcut than doing it through the custom CSS route. But we do have to go back to our style sheet and do a couple more things to get this kind of pulsing effect that we want. We do wanna set the animation name to pulse. We haven't created that yet, but we will in a minute. And animation duration to something like one second. And then animation iteration count to infinite because we want it to loop over and over and over. Now let's jump down here below our flip animation and do keyframes pulse. And I want this to be kind of a three part animation. So we'll start at 0% and we'll go opacity zero, transform scale zero. Then we'll go to 50% and we'll do opacity 0 0.5 and transform scale 0 0.5. One thing I wanna do is have it kind of fade out as it reaches 100%. So we'll do 100% and do opacity zero, but transform scale one. So it continues getting bigger, but it fades back out as it uh, reaches full size. So let's save that and jump up to the front end and refresh. And now you can see our nice little pulsing effect. It's subtle, but it's enough to draw some attention to these elements and maybe indicate to the visitor that, hey, maybe I should hover or click one of these. 
Now, because I mentioned accessibility at the beginning of the video, we're gonna go ahead and test this with the Mac OS screen reader. So let's go ahead and do Command F5 to bring that up. And because we have dev tools up, we're gonna get a bunch of crazy stuff here, but let's tab in and we're gonna see what it gives us when we select our links. You can see it tells us the link and it tells us the, the title that we set on these links too. So if I was uh, not fully cited and I needed to tab through these, I would know that I am highlighting a link for a location number four. And then the other thing is with the quick navigation, if we go back, we're gonna be able to highlight the image, which has an alt text that indicates that this is a map of our locations. Let's go ahead and close that out. And it certainly seems to be usable with the uh, screen reader. And also if we just use keyboard navigation, we can definitely navigate through these links and use them and also see our tooltips. So those are a couple of quick tests you can do on anything you build to make sure that it all kind of works for as many users as you can uh, manage. Now, another thing I like to do is run something called Axe DevTools, which you can see up here. Let's see if it'll work in incognito for me. I just switched it on, so we should have down here a little tab. And this helps you catch kind of some high level accessibility issues. So we can go through here and just scan the whole page. And of course it's not gonna work because I'm on a local install, but let me fire up a publicly accessible link here real quick and we'll run these dev tools. So here we are on a publicly accessible version of this local install that I'm running. Now we can do our Axe dev tools thing and make sure that we pass kind of the baseline stuff. So let's scan the entire page. And as you can see, we have absolutely zero issues, which I did test this before, and it was flagging us on the links and all these other things. So this dev tool report actually helped me find the things I needed to do, like the link titles and things like that. So Axe Dev Tools is great if you want to make sure you're creating at least somewhat accessible content. So as you can see, we've created an image hotspot type of element here using oxygen, absolutely no JavaScript, and it's somewhat accessible, which is always a goal here. So we go down and we hover the element, we get the location description in the tooltip. We also get our little browser pop-up that explains the link title to us. And as you saw before, it works with keyboard navigation, so I can hit tab and tab through these. It also works with the built-in screen reader on uh, Mac OS, which is great. Now, one minor issue with this CSS only approach is that these tool tips are not super easy to trigger on mobile, because on mobile, when you tap a link, you're gonna follow the link. I tested it, and the way this works is not too bad actually. So when you tap the link, because that gives the link focus, the tooltip does pop up for a minute while it loads the link destination, which gives you a chance to read the tooltip. So it's still functional on mobile, though if that behavior is not ideal, there are lots of JavaScript solutions for this problem that you can implement if you need that additional functionality. If you don't, avoid the JavaScript, have a lighter page that loads faster, and you're good to go. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that's how to create a CSS-only image hotspot element in Oxygen. Thank you very much for watching.